IV access. This is one of the most critical components of care for our sick patients, and the right choice can have a significant impact on whether our patient lives or dies. There are many choices in our supply room and resuscitation bays, so let's get down to brass tacks and talk about the difference between these catheters. When you want to resuscitate somebody and do it quickly, whether that's with blood or with fluids, this is the formula that runs through your mind. And the variables that matter in our calculus are going to be the catheter diameter and length. And this is why, almost counterintuitively, bilateral peripheral 16 gauges are going to out-transfuse a cordis. This is also why a relatively long triple lumen catheter can restrict your maximum flow rate. It really all comes down to the diameter and the length. The longer the catheter, the lower the maximum flow rate. And the larger the diameter, the higher the maximum flow rate. And this relationship is not linear. It is proportional to the fourth power. So in other words, if you double the diameter, then you will have a 16-fold increase in maximum flow rate. On most packaging, you'll find the stealthily hidden information. And these are the flow rates as we go from 22 to 20 to 18 to 16 to 14 demonstrating this important relationship between the flow and the diameter. This is a line that shows the flow rate of the cordis, and if you have bilateral peripheral gauges, these are your rates. This is why it's probably better to place two bilateral 16 gauge IVs than a cordis, because you can get more volume into the patient and you can probably get that IV faster than placing central access. So when you have a patient who requires a lot of volume and needs it quickly, whether that's from trauma or a bad GI bleed, choose your access wisely and keep this formula in mind.